To paraphrase George Orwell's classic socio-political novella Animal Farm, all distortion pedals are preamps, but some distortion pedals are more preamps than others. The subject of this video is the Gehenna from Lichtlärm Audio, which falls firmly in the camp of more preamp than other distortion pedals. But before we get too caught up in the minutia of this particular effect, let's establish what a preamp is and how it differs from a basic distortion pedal. Inside an amplifier, there are two main sections, the preamp and the power amp. This is true regardless of whether your amplifier utilizes valves or transistors to amplify. The preamp is the first part the guitar signal reaches upon entering the amplifier. The gain staging amplifies and, if required, distorts the weak guitar signal, then passes it on to the tone stack, which usually attenuates but occasionally can amplify different frequency bands in order to craft a desired equalization for the signal. The preamp is where the vast majority of tone crafting occurs, especially if you're looking for a modern high gain distortion sound. This amplified, distorted, tone crafted signal is then passed to the power amp, which as the name suggests, does the big powerful amplification, increasing the signal amplitude to drive a speaker to the desired volume. This amplification is done cleanly with no deliberate changes to the frequency content, but the valves, topology, transformer and power output will all contribute towards the maximum volume as well as the feel and response qualities of the amp. If your amplifier is a clean amplifier, like my Tone King Imperial, then you may wish to use an outboard effect to get heavy distortion. Distortion pedals sit in the signal chain between the guitar and amplifier. They amplify and distort the signal before it reaches the amp and are voiced with the expectation that more tone shaping will happen once the signal reaches the amplifier's preamp and tone stack. Some amplifiers feature an effects loop, which is simply a buffered breakout connection between the amplifier's preamp and power amp. The effects loop is primarily there to allow guitarists the opportunity to place pedals after the distortion and EQ of the preamp, effects types that would typically sound better after distortion like reverbs and delays. However, having access to the input of the amplifier's power amp, labelled effects return, is a powerful tool if perhaps we don't want to use the amplifier's internal preamp. By rearranging our signal chain, the distortion pedal now replaces the amplifier's preamp and tone stack, feeding directly into the power amp instead. This changes the whole sound of the amplifier while retaining the power, volume and feel. Therefore, the complexity of the distortion pedal, particularly in its EQ section, is one of the main deciding factors as to whether or not it will make an effective preamp. Armed with that information, we can see why something like the Proco Rat, with its simple low-pass filter tone control, isn't well equipped to be used as a preamp, despite it being a very excellent distortion pedal. Without a tone stack to come after it, the voicing of the distortion pedal doesn't make much sense in this arrangement. Of course, I'm not saying that you couldn't run this directly into the effects return, that is still possible, but you're probably going to get better results putting this ahead of the tone stack of your clean amplifier. Something like the Gehenna, on the other hand, with a powerful active four-band EQ and further passive depth and presence controls provides the necessary tone stack post-distortion to allow the pedal to function fully in place of a preamp. The Gehenna's internal voltage upscaling provides considerably more volume and headroom than a basic 9-volt distortion pedal, retaining the dynamic range and providing considerable level to the power amp. This will respond much closer to a preamp than something more basic in design. Now perhaps it's important to understand that while all of these features lend the Gehenna a distinct advantage if used as a preamp, this is still primarily designed to be used as a distortion pedal in front of a clean amplifier. So the way one would set the controls is going to be drastically different between both applications and the sounds achieved aren't going to be the same. You'll find the settings that sounded good in front of the amp will sound dark and muddy when used as a preamp, which is why having a comprehensive EQ section with lots of headroom is vital for compensating with much more extreme presence, high mid and treble settings.
Gehenna's general utility as a distortion pedal or preamp is bolstered by having two independent gain settings with a dedicated foot switch to change between them. Sort of like having a crunch and lead channel. The cut control gives the ability to dial in the tightness of the distortion structure, loosening it up for more vintage amp sounds or focusing it in for more modern applications. This will provide an excellent base layer distortion for many metal applications, which can be built on further by placing a boost or an overdrive ahead of it. I'll be utilising Lichtlerm's Asa Hatter to occasionally push the Gehenna further and keep the aesthetic tight. With this much gain staging, it might be prudent to use a noise gate to clamp down on that system noise. I'll be utilising the Rev G8 for this. When using the Gehenna as a distortion pedal, I'll be running into the front end of my Tone King Imperial, which provides a Fender style preamp and tone stack which most distortion pedals are optimised to run into. When used as a preamp, the Gehenna will run into the EL34 power amp of my Victory Kraken. <laughs> Hopefully this has been an interesting demonstration of Lichtlerm's Gehenna and a more general discussion on what to look out for when considering utilising distortion pedals as preamps. 
you'll find links to Gehenna's pedals in the description underneath this video. You might also want to support me on Patreon. Your financial contribution there helps make videos like this possible and lessens my reliance on sponsors to keep the lights on. And don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. That's all for now. Keep it loud and stay safe.